How can certain people, when they start a sports team, a church, a ministry, a nonprofit, a business, they make certain phone calls and they get people to rally to the cause, become customers, pay attention. But yet other people, they don't. Well, in this episode, I'm gonna discuss how millionaires command respect. Proverbs chapter 18 of the Wealth and Wisdom series, episode 18 on the seven figure squad, starting at three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And if you've been watching some of our videos and you think some of them have been very beneficial to you, please consider hitting like, so therefore we can spread the message of faith-based millionaires. The other portion is, if you watch a couple of our videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. So in this episode, I'm very excited about this. It's one of my favorite Proverbs, one of my favorite topics is really the law of respect and influence and leadership and helping you get a lot more people to say yes to you in whatever endeavor it is that you are doing. So the Bible that I use as reference when I'm studying the Bible is the John Maxwell Leadership Bible, and he's got a lot of excerpts on how he views scripture from the lens and perspective of a leader. So before I get into the points here, I got 10 points here. He talks about in this area of the Bible, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, and he's talking about the law of influence. What does Proverbs 18, 21 say? It reads like this. The tongue has a power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So very few muscles or body parts of the entire body has much effect in your life than the tongue. Yes, it's the brain because you think about things, but it's your tongue that speaks vision or sadly nightmares. So when I look at Proverbs chapter 18, I see a couple themes here that stick out the most to me. And he talks about a lot about listening and speaking, and he talks a lot about honoring other people. So let's talk about listening and speaking. Number one, Proverbs 18 verse two, it reads like this. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding but delights in airing his own opinion. You see, fools just think about themselves. See, that's why I believe today's society about do you, do you, do you. Yes, I get it, do you, but in relation to what? In relation to, it should be other people. So you should do you by considering other people if you want to lead and influence other people. And so therefore, when you need their help or ask for their guidance, you command respect. But the power of words, chapter 18, verse four, in 21, it reads like this. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. And back to 21, the tongue has a power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So if you understand the power of words, that's why I'm very careful too as well, of what type of music our children are listening to. Why? Because there's certain things that's in music that's re received very, very excitingly, very uh, uh, graciously, and people are pumped up to hear this music because of the beat, but yet the words are foul. The words speak curses into your life. The words speak things that don't uplift you and build you up and build your confidence and encouragement. So you have to consider the power of words because subconsciously, if you hear things, then consciously and subconsciously, words come out of your mouth that either command respect or command disrespect. So if you want to make sure you apply this into your life, put in the comment section below this affirmation. I am wise with the power of words. I am wise with the power of words. Put it in the comment section below. Number three, fools get what they get. What is this King Solomon talking about? Proverbs 18, verses six through eight. It reads like this. A fool's lips bring him strife, and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his undoing, and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to man's in most parts. So whatever you put out, my friends, you're gonna get. So if your entire life you've been acting a fool versus acting like a blessing, well, guess what? You either command respect or not get respect. So you have to ask yourself, what type of credibility have I been building? What type of respect level have I been getting based on the words that I'm speaking out of my mouth? That's what I've often said as an entrepreneur. If it's hard for you to become a very honorable employee to your boss, to honor your boss, to speak well of your boss, as much as you may not like it, well, guess what? If you decide to leave and your reputation with the boss and your coworkers doesn't command respect, that's a big reason why you're not getting respect on your next moves in your life. Number four, listen first, then answer. Proverbs 18, verse 13, it reads like this. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. How many times do you talk to somebody and you're finishing their sentences? Isn't that annoying? 
Isn't that disruptive? Doesn't that command more disrespect? Like, listen, man, I'm trying to get my thoughts out. I'm trying to get my ideas out, and yet you're cutting me off. You think, you assume you know what I'm thinking about, but it's the wrong thing. I'm going in a different direction with this. Well, that's why. Because people that use wisdom listen to other people first and then answer. So if this is an area that you need to focus on, please put in this comment section below this affirmation, which is an affirmation in honor of Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And it goes like this. I seek to understand, then be understood. I seek to understand, then be understood. Put it in the comment section below. And last but not least in this category, wise use of your mouth. What is wise use of your mouth then? What are the results that you get from either wise or unwise use of your mouth? Proverbs 18, verse 20, it reads like this. From the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is filled. With the harvest from his lips, he is satisfied. So, what do you, again, what are you putting out there? This intellect that, it's, that it gets expressed through this muscle can either get you a deal or no deal. Can get you a family fed or not fed. Again, the choice is yours either to command respect or disrespect. What's another category of this thing called honoring others? Listen, I wanna go through this definition real quick because I think what the society has today that it does not have is the honor culture, is a way of honoring other people. Let's go over this definition of honor right quick. And it reads like this. Adherence to what is right or to a conventional standard of conduct. Another way to use it as a verb is regard with great respect or to fulfill an obligation or keep an agreement. See, a lot of people don't follow this code. They don't follow this value. They don't follow this principle. Again, you get what you put out. And respect and commanding respect is something that's built up over time. And I've even ventured to say, even before you become financially successful, even before you become rich, even before you become wealthy, before you become a millionaire, if you've been able to keep the small promises and invoke great respect for other people, invoke great respect from when other people are speaking because you value their opinion, regardless if you agree with them or not. If you value other people and honor them, guess what, in return, they might subconsciously do right back to you. They might just honor you. So let's unpack here what honor means to King Solomon. It's been written a lot of it in this chapter 18. Number one, laziness affects more than just you. Let's look at Proverbs 18, verse nine. It reads like this. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. So again, laziness is not just affecting you. If you're lazy, people know about it. If you're lazy, you get fired. If you're lazy, it affects the overall team capacity, the ministry, the church, the sports, the business, your relationships, everybody knows about it and therefore you don't become the go-to person and everybody knows you're not the go-to person, then you don't command respect. So figure out what it is that you wanna do. Do you wanna be slack? Do you wanna be lazy? Or do you wanna actually get the job done and honor the position as small, as minute as you might think that position is? Because if you've been trusted with the small and you follow through with it and you're reliable and you're dependable, guess what? You'll be trusted with the larger opportunities. The other one here about honoring others. Honor the name of the Lord. What? Or honor your riches. Proverbs 18, verse 10 through 11, it reads like this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city. They imagine it an unscalable wall. So we're talking about the fear of the Lord. Well, if you go back to Proverbs chapter 1, it also says something very powerful about where respect knowledge and wisdom come from. It reads like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So in your time of need or your time of opportunity, what do you run to? Do you run to your checkbook? Do you run to your credit card? Do you run to your investment account? Do you run to your business? As if that is impenetrable, that your finances can never be attacked, that is got major defenses, that uh, cannot be taken down, or do you run to the word of the Lord, where the beginning of wisdom, how to get all those things happen. So it's interesting that our journey so far has seen as much as you can do here, horizontally here on the earth, around you on the earth. But if you don't have this vertical relationship going on with you and your creator, it's gonna be very difficult to have these horizontal things here on earth actually play out the way you'd hoped it'd be. And so the other thing here is, Power of gift giving. What do you mean power of gift giving? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, it reads like this. A gift opens a way for the giver and ushers him into the presence of the great. Now, a good, a good friend of mine, John Rulin, who's got a book called Giftology, and how he brings these love gifts to do some business deals. 
We did an interview with him. You can check it out right here. But very powerful message that he has in terms of his foot in the door is by loving on other people. It's a biblical principle, what he's following. And it got a lot of respect for what he does. He's got a lot of big deals. He got a lot of big opportunities his way because he gets his foot in the door, not by just asking for business, but giving them. And what does he give them? Gifts that honor their family. Gifts that honor the values and principles. Gifts that honor who that person and what that person stands for. A very powerful way of getting a foot in the door is by honoring people with giving them a gift. Now, for some of you, well, I don't have a budget for giving gifts. Great. How about uh, interacting with them on social media? Interacting with their ideas. Interacting with their thoughts. Interacting with their videos. Interacting with their content. How about buying their book? Simple things, like if you want people to do business with you, you should honor them and do business with them first. The other area here is what is the demise? What is the demise of lack of honoring others when wronging people? You think that you burn a bridge. You think that uh, you just turn your back on them. You think that you'll never hear from them again. Well, what does King Solomon say here in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19, when you cross somebody? An offended brother is more unyielding than a fortified city and disputes are like a barred gates of a citadel. So in other words, if you're trying to get a foot in the door, if you're trying to get a business deal done, and you've crossed somebody, you've burnt a bridge, you did somebody wrong, good luck. They'll probably never forget you for it. They'll probably have so much defense towards you, so much disrespect towards you, that even if you've come close to either business dealings or their associates or the customers or clients, everybody kind of knows what you've done, your rep reputation, is out there. And again, King Solomon says here what the value of a reputation is. A good reputation and respect are worth much more than silver and gold. Here's the challenge though. Some of you want to get the silver and gold. And you think by doing that, by crossing people, by doing people wrong, taking a shortcut, climbing over somebody's back to help you elevate yourself, you think that's getting the silver and gold, which you might get in the short term. But long term, if you play in the long game, which I recommend that you do, suggest that you do, do your very best to say, you know what, I'm wrong in this situation, I'm selfish in this situation, I'm greedy in this situation, Lord forgive me in this situation, but don't cross a brother because it's gonna come back and bite you in places you don't want it to. Last but not least, being reliable and dependable. What does have to do with you honoring other people and commanding respect? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, it reads like this. A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. We just did a reaction video earlier this week about the downfall of Young Thug. And sadly, he's got a bunch of people around him. And this happens to a lot of other celebrities, athletes, actors, in this case, an artist. But a bunch of people that surround him, an entourage that didn't say no to a situation, or a bunch of pretty much yes men doing wrong, then stems, hey, Young Thug, you want a long career or a short career? Maybe this is something we shouldn't be doing. And so, with that being said, what does it have to be with dependable and reliable? When you're out there, you say, I'm going to keep the small promises to myself. I'm going to stay on this side of righteousness versus wickedness. I'm going to make sure I do right by people versus doing wrong by people. I'm going to make sure I make my money by not having to look over my back or versus people that cross people and they do have to look over their back. When you are reliable and dependable and come through with the small promises you have, well, guess what? People remember that. That is the beginning of your golden touch, that whatever you decide to get involved in turns to gold, that whatever you decide to do becomes successful. Why? Because you are keeping the promises of being dependable and reliable, honoring other people, and the time that you, when other people needed you, you came through for them, now it's time for you to need other people, to do business with other people, guess what? Majority of them will lend an ear to you and at least hear you out. They may not say yes, which is a probability, but for the most part, because you've commanded respect, because you, you earned respect, well, guess what happens? Your life then becomes a little bit more easier to live. And here's a bonus proverb here for y'all single folks, because at one point I was single for 14 years as a single father. But let's read it real quick. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, it reads like this. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Notice it didn't say wives. And the irony behind this is King Solomon had many wives and many side tricks called concubines. So I find it ironic that King Solomon would write this, especially if coming from having a thousand women under his roof. I don't know. But listen, bottom line, however you think about King Solomon, 
who's regarded as the wisest and richest king who ever lived, he's still a man. The word I want to follow is not man's word, even though God was speaking him through King Solomon. I ultimately want to follow God's word. And so when you think about these type of things, when you think about people that are self-made, you think about people that are team-made, I think most importantly, you have to understand that we are all faith-made when it comes to something that's building, something's good, and something that lasts for the long term. And back to this whole bonus about fighting a wife, my encouragement to you is this. In the scripture, it talks about one setting flight to 1,000. But what two, what two can do, two sets flight to 10,000. The math is exponential. But when you find a wife, when you find a good woman that wants to honor you, that you want to honor her, that is a very good thing that you find from the Lord. Do your very best to protect it, honor it. There is no value in having so many different relationships and so many different lies you have to keep up. What we call that back in the day, what I used to call it back in the day, running game. There's no long-term value behind that. So with that being said, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. Before I let you go, please check out the other Proverbs we've broken down in previous weeks. A proverb a week for 31 weeks. Please check out these other episodes here too as well. Again, if you feel that this video has helped you somehow, some way, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of other videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy on this Wealth and Wisdom series, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.